holistic treatment of cancer in ancient Greece and in modern times. As I mentioned in the book, Holistic Medicine and Cancer, from ancient times to today, holistic medicine was practiced in ancient Greece and Hippocrates, the father of medicine, the father of naturopathy. Ancient Greek physicians followed the Hippocratic tradition, treated all diseases, including cancer, based on the principles of holistic medicine, emphasizing nutrition herbs, and seeing man as a psychosomatic entity, the writer says. The word cancer appears for the first time, as far as we can at least deduce from the surviving ancient writing, in the writings of Hippocrates in his aphorisms. One, he refers to hidden cancers, while in his book Epidemia, Epidemics, we also find the word carcinoma. Two, now many will be surprised to learn that ancient Greek physicians not only correctly diagnosed cancer, but also treated many cases of cancer with remarkable success. The following passage was from the work of Galen proves the truth of the statement and cannot be disputed. Quote, the medicines thus conjoined can to a great extent cure cancers in an early stage at the same time as purging. Advanced cancers also are capable of preventing them from increasing, end quote. And these medicine, in, many of these medicines included these herbs. According to Gallen, there are two ways of treating cancer, the common and the specific, and preventing the accumulation in the body of this carcinogenic juice, the so-called melancholic or mel melanic bile, through the appropriate cleansing of the body, which is achieved by the administration of a special drug of the desire, uh, paras parasite of anger. So in other words, hmm, Anger, of course, brings on, or fear, or anxiety, stress, anger, uh, which is a very negative emotion, brings on cancer. Now, it's surprising that at that ancient uh, time, Galen had established that cancer was due to the melancholy ill humor and melancholy mood of the patient. It's remarkable that, as deduced from the writings of Galen, this brilliant physician believed that cancer does not appear overnight but is the result of the long-term action of the melancholic juice. Uh, so the juice meaning, uh, of course, liquids in the body. Now this is why he recommended the avoidance of all depressing situations through which the bad, bad mood of the body increases. But Gallen does not limit himself only to the role of emotions. He considers that nutrition also plays a decisive role in the manifestation of cancer, something that modern science only began to accept in the middle of the 20th century. But 18 centuries ago, Gallen prevented people from eating foods that cause an increase in melancholic bad mood. He recommended cancer patients to avoid spices, lentils, strong wine, etc. Oh, I love lentil soup, what can I tell you? But, uh, and I love pepper, uh, and uh, anyway. Uh, it's impressive that he believed that cancer patients, I don't have cancer, but anyway, uh, it's impressive that he believed that cancer patients should also be careful about their diet so that the cancer does not reoccur. Uh, but I have to tell you that I am uh, very frequently going for holy confession, so that takes a lot of, you know, anger out of you, of course. Now, uh, uh, going back to this, cancer in modern times, Prevention is better than cure, according to Hippocratic principles. Prevention is more important than cure, and this also applies to cancer. In my book, Holistic Medicine and Cancer, From Antiquity to the Present Day, I prove that antioxidants taken in small doses from the diet or from nutritional supplements prevent cancer, while some of these antioxidants, such as ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, in high doses act as oxidants and can, uh, and, and can be used to treat cancer. In addition to oxidative stress, another cause of cancer is chronic inflammation. While acute inflammation is beneficial, chronic system inflammation causes ongoing tissue damage and is associated with many chronic diseases, including cancer. So minimizing systemic inflammation is an important goal of therapies to treat chronic degenerative diseases in general, and cancer in particular. 
Achieving this goal is particularly difficult in cancer patients and survivors because conventional cancer treatments often promote inflammation. The problem with chemotherapy drugs is that they increase inflammation, which contributes to treatment failure and promotes metastasis. NF-kappa-B, nuclear factor kappa-beta, is a protein complex that affects many aspects of cellular activity by regulating more than 150 genes involved in inflammation, cell survival, and immune function. Chronic activity or dysregulation of NF-kappa-B signaling is a critical factor in cancer. NF-kappa-B overactivation is involved in cancer initiation, growth and metastasis, and contributes to treatment resistance in cancer cells. A wide range of natural compounds have been shown to reduce NF-kappa-B activity, including curcumin. Oh, that's, the one, that's what I wanted to say. Curcumin. You have to cook it. You can't eat it raw. So don't sprinkle it on top of your yogurt. You have to cook it. Okay? Curcumin is something like, uh, uh, like a curry. Capsias, capsiasin, quercetin, pepperin, black cumin oil, and thyme. The effects of these compounds can be a factor accounting for much lower cancer rates seen in some countries where these spices are consumed daily, such as in India. This is confirmed by a study published in 2018 in the Journal of Transna Translational Medicine. Some other examples of natural agents that have been shown to inhibit NF-kappa-B include chrysin, aloe, resveratrol, troll and epigallocatesin gallate, that's green tea, tree extract, green tea extract. Now, a small study published in 2006 in the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology looked at a combination of curcumin and quercetin in five patients with familial adenomatous polyposis, an inherited condition characterized by hundreds of pancreatic and precancerous colon polyps after six months of taking 480 milligrams of curcumin and 20 milligrams of quercetin three times a day. All five participants had a reduction in the number of size of polyps in their colon. Overall, the average number of polyps was reduced by 60.4% and the average size was reduced by 50.9%. And this I've translated for you from a Greek article. Of, by Marius Dimopoulos, Marius Dimopoulos, um, Holistic Life uh, from a Greek article. He's a professor of nutrition at the School of Natural Health Science in Greece, where he teaches about nutritional supplements to pharmacists, dietitians, nutritionists, and alternative healers. Marius Dimopoulos has written 36 books on health issues. So please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Curcumin is a, a beautiful thing. On, in your chicken, on your rice, but again, you have to cook it. Okay. Uh, God bless you, and uh, please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon accounts. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.